today my talk is going to be a quick run through about chronic kidney disease, especially looking at it in primary care. I know it's, a lot of it is done in the UK, but I think it's something that is easily translatable to work done in India as well. So diabetes, as we know, is the single most common cause of end-stage renal failure worldwide and represents a major public health burden. We know the uh, incidence or prevalence of diabetes is very high in uh, India as well, and so obviously this represents a uh, similar problems across the world. Early identification and evidence-based intervention are critical, and that's the same across the board, just like the other talks we heard before with regards to uh, identification of uh, MODI and also early identification and treatment of people with cardiac disease as well. So uncontrolled diabetes we know can cause life-threatening complications. The main thing I want you to focus on is that type 2 diabetes is not just about managing blood glucose and also should be focused on blood pressure and lipids. Screening for and managing complications including renal problems, retinopathy and foot ulcers. So again, I think it's been reinforced by my previous speakers that it's important to look at all aspects of diabetes, not just the glycemia. But the equally, about 40% of people with type 2 diabetes have some form of chronic kidney disease, and people with diabetes are five times more likely to need either kidney dialysis or a kidney transplant. But clearly, what, do, what is chronic diabetic kidney disease? So we all know what chronic kidney disease is. It's abnormalities of kidney function or function lasting greater than three months with implication for health. Diabetic kidney disease or diabetic nephropathy is a subtype of that. And you remember the diagnostic criteria, again, is actually changed a bit now. So it always talks about two EGFR results less than 60 mils per minute and e or EGFR greater than 60 with markers of kidney damage. And remember, even just having a raised albumin creatinine ratio qualifies you as having chronic kidney disease. So I think that's an important marker to understand. So we know this slide just depicts the growing problems of type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So there are 422 million people in the world living with diabetes and 30 to 40 percent of those will develop chronic kidney disease. So Improvement in renal and cardiovascular morbidity and mortality is an integral part of type 2 diabetes management. So, like I said before, it's not just about some glycemia, you need to be looking at everything else. Even mild CKD increases the risk of serious health problems. So, type 2 diabetes patients with chronic kidney disease are at a high risk of losing more kidney function and major adverse cardiovascular events. And like Ashish talked about before, the importance of using SGLT2 inhibitors early on actually can improve cardiovascular outcomes even if it is related to chronic kidney disease. So many patients with diabetes and renal impairment die from a CV event before progressing to end-stage kidney disease. So again, you won't die of the kidney disease, you're going to more likely die of the cardiovascular event. In patients with stage 3 CKD, the risk of death is 10 times higher. So what are the risk factors? I think a lot of us know what these are. So there's increasing age, diabetes is one, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, nephrotoxic drugs, smoking, big one, obesity, multi-system disease, and ethnic origin plays a huge part as well, especially in our case, South Asian and Afro-Caribbean populations. And also if you have a positive family history of renal disease. So DKD predominantly accounts for the increased mortality in type 2 diabetes. So the increased mortality seen in type 2 diabetes patients has been mainly attributed to diabetic kidney disease. But as you can see, if you have type 2 diabetes, albuminuria, and impaired e EGFR, your risk is 4.5 times higher than just having one of those things. So preventing diabetic kidney disease or reducing progression could reduce cardiovascular events in people with type 2 diabetes. There are numerous trials that have come out recently as well, which talked about the importance of using therapies earlier on. But equally, don't forget the important bits that are around managing blood pressure and lipids as well. So diabetic kidney disease patients have a high risk of, high risk of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease compared to people with diabetes and no kidney disease. So we talked about this as so a three times higher risk of congestive heart failure, 85% higher risk of myocardial infarction, and 65% higher risk of stroke. So you can see the importance of managing kidney disease with a view to preventing heart failure, myocardial infarction, and stroke. So 
focusing on the detection of diabetic kidney disease and preventing or slowing its progression could substantially reduce rates of CV and non-CV events in patients with diabetes. This is the crux of the problem and this is where I think primary care has an important role to play in identifying people with chronic kidney disease or diabetic kidney disease and that can be done very simply because we know they're all linked together. So we talk about the uh, cardiac, renal and metabolic systems all connected together and causing various problems such as heart failure and uh, chronic kidney disease and di diabetic kidney disease. People with heart failure are high risk of cardiovascular death. This is UK data and just shows that heart failure is responsible for 50% mortality over five years and also leads to 65,000 unplanned hospital admissions that are, that's in the UK alone. And this is on the background of chronic kidney disease. And chronic kidney disease is responsible for 100,000 unplanned hospital admissions and 45,000 people die each year and more than 50% of them from cardiovascular disease. You can see how they're all interlinked and that's why I think it's important to focus on the patient as a whole rather than looking at in individual aspects of management. Like I said before, primary care plays a huge part in this and what can we do to make things better? So one thing, simple thing is doing a urine check for ACR. If you can just do that, it helps us identify patients much quicker. And you can see the rates at which they are detecting them, even in the UK, where there's a good primary care system, we're finding that the rates are very low. And you look at that diabetes patients, a lot of them get an EGFR result done. But sadly, not many of us ask them for a urine sample because one, we as primary care physicians don't seem to understand the importance of your ACR or we don't talk to the patients with diabetes enough about what the importance of having a urine test to identify early kidney disease. NICE has produced, NICE is our bring, as you all know, has produced uh, a chronic disease management and it gives you a list of things that we need to be doing, especially if you look at proteinuria. It says use urine ACR rather than protein creatinine ratio because of the greater sensitivity for low levels of proteinuria. Check an ACR between 3 mg per mole and 70 mg per mole in a subsequent early morning sample. That's why we say any sample is good for the first test, but once it comes back positive, you need to get an early morning sample. A repeat sample is not needed if the initial test did show that the urine ACR was over 70 mg per mole. I think these are simple things you can put in play in primary care anywhere in the world. Get the patient to bring in a urine sample and check it for microalbuminuria. So a lot of you would have seen this Kidigo heat map and it talks about what the diagnosis of uh, thing and where the different classifications are. You can see that as your um, uh, EGFR uh, worsens, your increased risk. And similarly, if you increase proteinuria, it also shows increased risk. And what it shows is all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, end-stage, renal disease, acute kidney, everything is increased as you go down towards the more red. And one of the things we do try and say is if you're in the red, you're more likely to be dead. But sadly, but increasingly, with the therapies that we have available now, we can prevent that. So we're talking about prognosis worsens with decreasing EGFR or increasing albuminuria. People then ask, okay, how often should we be checking? Again, this is a really good uh, heat map type thing, which is available from NICE, which is online. It just tells you what different criteria, but when to measure, how often to measure the uh, EGFR and urine ACR. Another question, primary care is simple. I've just made this very simple, just so that people can keep this in mind and at least speak to somebody about it. If the EGFR is less than 15, refer. EGFR between 15 and 29, discussion with the renal team. And what about EGFR between 30 and 59? Routine referral if sustained increase in EGFR greater than 25% or change in EGFR category in 12 months. That is important because you will find a lot of people in primary care have an EGFR within this range, which is considered normal, let's say. But if you don't click on it and look at the, the delta or the change, that is, you're going to miss people who are going to develop serious problems with regards to the kidneys. Other reasons you might want to refer are acute kidney injury, proteinuria, hematuria, hypertension, especially if it's malignant, or if they're on four therapies and they need further treatment, systemic illness, renal outflow obstruction, one cause of acute drops in EGFR. I think it's important to examine the patient and make sure that you're not missing something like that. 
And last couple of slides, just talking about diabetic kidney disease management. So main thing, ACE inhibitor, angiotensin receptor blockade, the intolerant of ACE. Target the BP, make sure you get it down to an appropriate level. Look at cardiovascular risk reduction. Well, by that I mean looking at lifestyle and also looking at statins, etc. Diabetes management, glycemia and kidney protective agents. Ashish did show a slide about the various, uh, various management protocols that have been devised with regards to cardiovascular risk management, reducing glycemia, etc. And looking at other aspects of which is the best therapy for people with diabetes and chronic kidney disease or cardiovascular disease. So I'll just quickly finish now. In summary, what I would like you to do, when you see a person with diabetes or chronic kidney disease, think about blood pressure. Think about the ACE or the ARBs. Think about a statin. And finally, don't forget the SGLT2 inhibitors. More important than ever is sick day guidance rules. This is something we tend to forget when we initiate therapies about what the drugs that should be stopped, especially to prevent them from getting acute kidney injury. Close monitoring for hypoglycemia for an insulin and or glycoside, especially if the kidney function is poor. And remember, adjust the medications according to the renal doses because with increasing therapies, the change in the EGFRs and where you could, should halve the dose is important, especially if you're people uh, are on metformin. Remember, you need to halve the doses, the EGFR is below 45 and you need to stop it if it's below 30. I will stop there and take any questions that you might have to keep it short and sweet.